what makes a video game an RPG? What are the definitive video game RPGs? One live stream will give you all the answers. Not really, but I'm going to play some RPGs I like and hang out with you guys Friday, August 7th from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. I would love for you to come and chat with me about whatever's on your mind during my Defining RPGs live stream at youtube.com slash Christian Geek Central. That's Friday, August 7th, starting at 5 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. Hope to see you then. Hey, I'm Peter France, and welcome to Christian Geek Central's Quarantine Escape Hatch, a series designed to uh, help you hopefully reset and then re-engage with your life while you're still dealing with quarantine so that you can ideally experience more of the kind of life, the kind of fulfillment that God wants for you and me, even during challenging circumstances. First, we're just going to take a little breather uh, with a great video game you can get cheaply or that's maybe in your collection already and worth revisiting. And this time, that's No Man's Sky. All right, I have really come back to this game recently because of the Desolation update. But even just beyond what that update added, I'm reminded of all the things I love about this game. Into the great beyond! So this is actually, um, pretty close to my, here's my capital ship. And the fleet that I'm developing there, and then I've got a base down here. Why don't we head down there, actually? Oh, I can't use my pulse engine yet. Okay. But this is, um, you know what, actually, I'm going to do something different. I want to go and explore some other star system that I haven't been to yet. Because that really kind of showcases one of the key things I enjoy about this game. Let's see here. Yeah, that has a good number of planets, and I've never been to it before. And it's got a bit of conflict going on there, but uh, a okay economy. All right. Um, oh, actually, no, it's unpromising economy. Oh, well, I'm not in it for buying and selling. I want to explore! This is a game that really exemplifies what I've come to believe about games in general. Specifically that they are knowingly, or in most cases unknowingly, created as outworkings of our deep desires as humans um, for what God will ultimately provide. Games are, if you think about it, like a bit like work, but without any of the downsides. You know, ideally, if a game's designed well, you're going to enjoy it, even though there's effort involved. And uh, other things in, in games that involve, like, exploration... Uh, I think are unintended foretastes of what it will be to explore who God is and all that he has done and is doing throughout eternity with him. Uh, let's see, what do we got here? Gamma Root. Oh, decaying nuclear planet. Uh, let's see, what else we got here? Anything easily accessible? Oh, what's this over here? Is that a moon? Okay, just zero in there. Come on, give me that little pop-up. You don't want to give it to me? All right, I'll go just a little bit that way. Get a little better view of it. And now we'll try... Still not going to give it to me, huh? All right. But there we go. And all the... Uh, but, but all the crafting stuff, too. There's so, there's so much gathering of resources. Oh, a high-energy planet with Gamma Root. That sounds fun. Let's go check that out. Um, all the resource collecting and crafting. You know, these are elements of work that are gamified. All the, the lame parts are taken out of them. Productivity happens so much faster. It doesn't have the obstacles that real efforts in work do. And uh, so I think a game like this on multiple levels kind of unwittingly speaks to 
the things we were made for and that we desire and that we are thwarted from experiencing in this life. A game like this, I think, hints at the promises of eternity um, with a God who made us for specific things and purposes and that will fulfill those purposes uh, in relationship with him forever. And it's funny, this game actually, uh, although not in that, in those respects, it really uh, endeavors to be philosophical itself. Lots of quotes from philosophers and thinkers, um, usually those of a, of a naturalistic or atheistic bent or that have been influential in science fiction. Interesting plans here. Let's, uh, let's land and check this place out. So I don't think it's uh, at all out of place to be waxing philosophical while playing No Man's Sky. All right, what do we got here? Unstable atmosphere. Sentinels are spread thin. I like that. I don't really want them getting in my way if they don't have to. Nice. And now we just start scanning things, identifying things. Buried technology module. What else we got around here that we could check out? Oh, that one's a little closer. Let's go check that one out. Oh, that's nice and close. Okay. Get my terrain manipulator mode active. Let's see what we got. Oh, come on. There we go. Technology module. Nice. All right, so I got that salvage data. That's going to unlock blueprints for more things that I can craft later on. I'm working on um, a CGC headquarters that I'll eventually be able to uh, invite you guys to if any of you are No Man's Sky players. I've got a couple CGC outposts already. Um, let's see. Let's drop... Oh! Better take care of that. I've got to the point now with my upgrades that I've got awesome shields. I've got uh, on my uh, main, you know, exosuit, and then also on my s spacecraft. And so exploration is really—I uh, don't know—I don't have to be afraid that I'm going to get killed by pirates or. Uh, other bad things walking around on planets. So that frees me up to really enjoy exploring the farthest reaches of No Man's Sky. Alright, so what do we want to look for? Outpost signal detection online. Navigation subroutines online. Exosuit sub upgrade unit detection online. That's what I really want to find, but I think I I specifically need one drop coordinate data. And I can't remember how to get those, but let's locate a nearby structure. What do we got? What is that? Manufacturing facility, okay. So that's about a five-minute trip. We can make that faster in our uh, our ship. Where'd our ship go? Oh, over here. This is my uh, my starship, which I renamed. If you didn't see it earlier, the Yellow Mother Trucker. <laughs> it's my high uh, cargo capacity starship. I've got one specifically for fighting off pirates or sentinels in space. If I want to do that. But this one I use for exploration, and for a while I was using it for um, for buying and selling. I would go to systems that had plentiful resources of one kind, and then I would take them to uh, star systems that didn't have that resource, and so it would be worth a whole lot more. And I had like a whole uh, like a, a, a trucking route, as it were 
where I would pick up supplies in one place and take them to another and pick up supplies there that would be good in the next place and so on and so forth. And so I was racking up the uh, units, the space credits. All right, let's see here. Now, I think I can get a blueprint if I blow this door open, but that is going to attract the attention of the, uh, the Sentinels. That's all right. We can deal with that. Reload. All right, don't mind me, Sentinels. Once I get in here, they, they don't really attack. But then I'm gonna figure out this puzzle. I had been when I was really trying to get a lot of blueprints uh, jumping on and uh, online and cheating a bit to uh, solve these riddles, but I'll just take my best shot out here. The terminal flash is an urgent warning. Some vital part of the facility has been compromised by the security alert. Hmm. Intruder alert, battle enzyme, something halted. The red words are the ones that I am able to translate based on the words I've learned from the local dominant species. Uh, battle enzyme something halted, electrical something removed, something body, something something. Battle enzyme, electrical something removed, okay. The display takes me aback, a warrior's heart is on screen, it's beat irregular. Connected to wires and artificial valves, it seems to pump a biological liquid through organs deep within the facility. Hmm. Tricky. Do I want to increase electrical flow, initiate adrenaline flux, or power down systems? I don't want to power down systems, because that's probably going to kill this thing. It seems like it's running off of this heartbeat. Heartbeat is irregular. Um, well, should I initiate adrenal adrenaline flux? or I'm afraid that I'm going to kill this thing if I... Uh, it seems to pump a biological liquid through organs deep within the facility. Let's try the, um... Hmm. I don't know, maybe it needs more electrical flow. I don't know, I'm missing a key word! But I feel like, uh... Initiate adrenaline flux. Flux. You know what, I... I'm gonna gamble. I would think that if the problem was that there's too much electricity, they'd give me the option to decrease electrical flow. I, I don't I don't want to power down the systems altogether. That does not seem like the right move. I'm going to try increase electrical flow. I increase the power flow to the facility's heart. It judders, then establishes a regular beat. Yes! Its strange existence continues. With this emergency over, the terminal reverts to a standard factory input system. Normal operations have resumed, and I have access to the facility's main control panel. I should be able to alter production to my own benefit. Yay! Extract nanites, extract units. I want to learn a new recipe. Unless I've learned them all already. Have I learned? Have I unlocked all these? Oh, no, I haven't. Okay. So, let's see. Components and devices? Uh, what's over here? I mean, there's so many things. I want to learn all these things eventually, but... Let's go with the uh, unstable plasma recipe for now. Not sure if that's relevant to anything I'm currently hoping to build, but... Alright, nice. Very good. And now, you know what, let's leave this system and let's go back to my... headquarters. And prepare to sh set up shop there for the next time I play. Because I won't be able to do much while I'm there now. I still do love the uh, the gimmick of, you know, being able to, without seeing a load screen, enter or exit a planet's atmosphere. Although, here's a hidden load screen. As I warp from one system to the other. Uh, yes, this is my, this is where my base is at. And that's essentially what this is, but, you know. It still feels cool and, and feels somewhat appropriate that even moving at, like, light speed or, uh, faster than light speed, um, you would, uh, still see a bit of a load screen. Alright, just had to jump away for a second to make sure that my son didn't need help with something. I saw him come to my office door. He's having his first day of junior high. 
and it's here at home. <laughs> so that sucks a bit. All right, my planet, I named it Mesaz, uh, which is Mesa AZ. Oh, what's this? Oh, trade frequency. Let's see here. They've added these interesting random encounters. Oh, little pop in there. That's one thing that I um, am not super happy about. I feel like there's been more pop in lately, probably because they've been adding more things. I'll really be uh, interested to see how this runs on next-gen consoles. Lakeen, who something to don't know what he's saying. Trader transmits their cargo manifest, revealing a strange collection. Their hold is full of relics, items of importance to their people. They appear willing to part with them. Um, yeah. Well, let's. Uh, I don't want to give it my uranium. Let's give him units. The relic is worth the asking price, even if I'm unsure what exactly it's for. These items are highly valued by the people who live in this system. All right, so hopefully I'll be able to sell it for some profit there. Pouch of rare twigs, okay. <laughs> I'll trust it has some value to the locals. Oh, that's a trading post. That's not my base. I wanted to kind of lock in on my base. Maybe I can do that when I get a little closer here. Here's my base. Okay, let's actually... There we go. Yeah, there's something I like about how they handle space travel and the various speeds that you move at, and how there's still some waiting involved. That feels... Even though I know it's ultimately masking some loading, it feels... Appropriate. All right. This is Planet Mesas. <laughs> Which uh, is very appropriate. It's got like these terrible storms and heat and stuff. <laughs> dusty winds, dusty environment. It's got weird looking cacti. And uh, here's just the very beginnings of a rudimentary base set up next to a portal um, for traveling convenience and for uh, visitor convenience once I finish setting up shop and, and uh, put some travel coordinates out there. But anyway, uh, I guess that's enough for now for a little break in the day. I can so easily stay fixated on the things that are bothering me or that are troubling me and so it's been really um, worthwhile to have some verses in the Bible to remind me of some truths I need to remember relevant to those specific troubles or frustrations I'm experiencing. Um, lately I have been specifically dealing with the loss of a treasured voice teacher um, from college that I worked closely under for five years and is probably the, um, because I've not experienced uh, hardly any loss in my life, God has been very mystifyingly gentle with me in that way. Uh, because of that, this is easily the, uh, the deepest loss I felt in my adult life. And right now that pain is made worse by the fact that we can't, we can't gather for his memorial service. Um, we can't share our pain with each other. We can't sit down. We can't hug each other. Um, so that it's so quarantine is just making this um, even worse than it would already be. Uh, you might not be experiencing the loss of someone that you uh, really love, but you might be going through other things that are difficult or frustrating or discouraging that under even normal circumstances would be hard and would be kind of upsetting your life. And now maybe you're having to deal with those things in this quarantine. Or if you're watching this, you know, long after quarantine has hopefully passed during just other circumstances that pile on or make things more difficult. And uh, I think that is the time when it's really useful, among other things, for us as believers to turn to the reality of resurrection, to really contemplate uh, that the resurrection that we are promised is not just a nice idea that we tell ourselves, uh, but is actually absolutely grounded 
in fact and reason. In uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 12 through 20, the Apostle Paul makes it clear that he is not uh, somebody that's all about just thinking something nice to make yourself feel better. In 1 Corinthians 15, 12 through 20 in the ESV, he says, Now if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain, and your faith is in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God, because we testified about God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise, if it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in Christ we have hope in this life only, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep, meaning he is the, the first sample of those who will follow him, who die in Christ. Uh, as part of God's family. Um, likewise, 1 Corinthians 4, 13 and 14 in the ESV says, but we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, meaning those uh, brothers and sisters in Christ who have passed away, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. Now, maybe, you know, you're not grieving uh, someone, the death of someone that you love, but I think that these verses are just as vital for any time we are just, when life has just hit the fan, and we're just in a mess, and, uh, and things get really hard, to remember the reality of the hope of resurrection is, is something that we can cling to and know that it's grounded in fact and reason. I want to highly recommend uh, Gary Habermas, if you're not familiar with his work. Uh, he makes a very compelling argument for the resurrection of Jesus based on the historical facts that even the harshest, harshest critics of Christianity accept as being true, and just based on those facts alone. So if you're like me and you wonder, now and then you have these emotional, emotionally driven thoughts. Am I just kidding myself? Am I just telling myself nice things? Then work like that of Dr. Habermas is extremely valuable to people like you and me who can sometimes get caught up in our emotions and in our second guessing and all those kinds of things. And uh, So anyway, I highly recommend something like that or, uh, or another resource that can really help you just be grounded and step out of those uh, emotion-based thoughts and uh, recognize the groundedness of your faith, your trust in the resurrection, and the implications that that has for you as a believer in Jesus, and the promise that we have, so that even when we're going through the crap now, we can, through our tears, cling to those promises of Jesus that this time will pass, and something wonderful is waiting for us that will make all of this uh, absolutely worth what we've had to go through. Um, one more thing before I go, in stressful times, it's so easy for us geeks, speaking from experience, to retreat into our minds, to try to escape from reality. One problem with that is that our lives become all about us then, and we cut ourselves off from having the intentional relational experiences God made us to have with others. So I want to invite you to do one thing right now to connect with someone else uh, before you head into the rest of your day. Uh, I, I offer a different suggestion on each of these little episodes. This time I want to suggest that you tell someone, a believer if at all possible, about your pain and about your troubles, rather than trying to uh, just kind of solo your way through life. Tell someone about what you're feeling, what you're struggling with. Just be willing to be open, if you can, with someone, in particular a believer, because they're going to be most equipped to, uh, to help you have the encouragement and the perspective that's going to help you endure through what you're experiencing. So uh, I actually am already kind of in the planning motions of getting together with uh, some believers that knew my teacher and loved him 
because my wife, you know, met him a few times, but talking to her is just not the same as talking to someone that, that knows him and loves him like I do. And so I'm really looking forward to that. I'm going to put up a video later this week, I think, that goes into more detail about what my voice teacher meant to me so that you can share in that with me uh, if you would like. Um, but anyway, I hope you find some encouragement in that today in what I've shared and in, the, and in that call to share your pain, share your struggles with uh, another believer. That's all for now. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye. What makes a video game an RPG? What are the definitive video game RPGs? One live stream will give you all the answers. Not really, but I'm going to play some RPGs I like and hang out with you guys Friday, August 7th from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. I would love for you to come and chat with me about whatever's on your mind during my Defining RPGs live stream at youtube.com slash christiangeekcentral. That's Friday, August 7th, starting at 5 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. Hope to see you then.